Welcome to Stories with Briscoe and Bradshaw. That would be Mr. Briscoe, whichever direction he is. I would be Bradshaw. And there's some great characters from the Attitude Era. This is one of the best. From Naked Midian to the Ministry to <laughs> Phineas I. Godwin. He is Mr. Dennis Knight, one of our good friends and a member of the BSK. Tex Slasinger, welcome to the show. Hi, buddies. How come you started with Naked Midian? Because I love Naked Midian. I'm not Dude, naked I did that for six months, and everybody was like bitching at me. I was like, before this, I've been getting my head kicked in by Bradshaw and Vader and everybody every night. They're paying me the exact same amount of money to run to the ring in a fanny pack. I was like, I'm golden, dude. I did it for like six, seven months and uh, never got hurt. And it was great. And that's all anyone, that, that's the first thing. Hey, Naked Midian. And I have the, the Midian uh, fanny pack too still. It's the greatest character from the Attitude Era. I love it. We thought the boys in the back would just die when you come out and do the Heisman pose. That's right. That was, was that your idea? I think that was your idea. You said, because I didn't know. I was just going to run through like a streaker. And you said, hit him with something. Uh, I don't know. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Because the big oh, yeah. fat white guy doing an athletic pose is just <laughs> the funniest. Big Boss Man. I was traveling with uh, with uh, Terry Reynolds and Big Boss Man uh, while I was doing that. And uh, Boss Man was like, man, you should get a tan or something. It'll just look better. <laughs> and I looked at him and Terry Reynolds said before I could, she goes, it is so much funnier that he's all white. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why, this I, isn't a good looking guy. I tell you, you know, I was working gorilla during Naked Midian's days and that was always a treat. You know, nobody liked coming up there because Vince was up there. So, you know, yeah. the gorilla, gorilla didn't have a lot of people crowding around, but when Naked Midian would to make his yeah. run out, gorilla was wall to wall. It's like selling out the old curtain, you know, you would sell out gorilla position. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that none of my in-ring ability ever sold out the gorilla position. It took a fucking, <laughs> it took a, a fanny pack to do it. But do you know how that came about? No. How? Yo, know, you neither one of you know. Okay, uh, we were uh, in whatever building that was. Michael Rappaport used to show. I I see these guys, especially cactus. They're like. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Scranton at the Catholic Youth Center in December. But I'm like, dude, I don't remember any of the dates. or the, Everything just, like, blurred together. But uh, we were somewhere in upstate New York, up on uh, uh, White Plains or area or whatever. And uh, we, uh, I just done a shitload of uh, radio stuff during the morning. Well, they had us, especially with the Godwins. We did 17 radio and TV interviews in two days. We had the record. It was fucking brutal, dude. And then go and wrestle, by the way. So I'd done a bunch and everything, and I was dead. And uh, then after the match, uh, whoever I was wrestling, I uh, was in the locker room, and one of them little dudes came and opened. He was like, oh, I need someone for a meet and greet right now. And they're like, uh, looking around, it's like Taker and fucking, you know, Brad or blah, blah, blah. It's all these big guys. And they look around, and they go, oh, yeah, maybe didn't come with us. And I was like, fuck this. I just did all that. So I was like, screw it. I just, I was literally naked. I put my fanny pack on and I walked out into the hallway and I said, all right, where the fuck is this meet and greet at? And they lost it. And then <laughs> the next day was a Monday Night Raw. And uh, uh, somebody, Sarge or somebody comes to me and says, um, Vince wants to talk to you. And uh, I'm like, cool, push. Not really. I wasn't thinking that. Uh he said, uh, did you walk out into the hallway in just a panty pack? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Should I have done it when you were around? I didn't know if you wanted to see it, jokingly. And he laughed, and he goes, uh, you're going to run through the crowd tonight uh, during a dark segment to see if they laugh. And if they laugh, you're going to run through on the main show. And I was like, <laughs> okay, whatever. Shit. I'm just happy to be here, man. I, I thought maybe you were going to tell me you got it after Layfield going down in the lobby of the hotel with just yeah. his cowboy boots What on. is that? That's a wrestling thing. And I remember not to tell Corey's <laughs> out of school, but didn't even the awesome uh, Your Honor Mayor Kane in a Germany trip 
come down like in his underwear or nothing, uh, like after a bottle of that Apple Jack. It was legendary. I remember that. I know he came down because it was the only time he ever drank, you know? Apple we stock. Apple yeah, stock. whatever the oh gross. Yes, what happened, what happened, Dennis, was uh, Glenn and I were the Zvi Meter and Zvi tag team for working for Otto and I think Oh, was, okay, you were there. Okay. I was yeah. And so Glenn and I, we had nothing to do. So we'd go out to Anka's. It was this place for six and a half marks. You could drink all you want, eat all you want. We had nothing to do. You know, we, we lived in the same parking lot, wrestled the same building for weeks at a time. So Glenn and I- That's weird. Out. That's got to be weird and kind of cool. But after about a month, you're like, oh, I just want to go somewhere else. Or was it like a job where you just go every day to the same building? It's kind of like a job. You know, you're ready to yeah. move after six, seven weeks. But oh, yeah, it's kind yeah. of like a job. You know, it's so easy. So, but you had, okay. nothing, you had nothing to do. No travel, nothing. nothing. So Glenn and I would go out every night. So when I came to WWE and they told me about uh, Glenn being there, I said, yeah, man, he's pretty wild. And they go, Glenn Jacobs? <laughs> <laughs> we went out every night. And yeah. I see Glenn, he goes, well, I just had nothing to do. So I went out. Yeah, and exactly. So we back to Germany. He decided to, uh, <laughs> we're in the same town. That's where it happened. The apple snaps. Did you drink with him? Did you go with him and drink the apple snaps that night? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. He actually came back down with his with his uh, clothes on backwards because I think <laughs> even Dilo, better. Dilo had put him to bed <laughs> and uh, came back down with his clothes on backwards. How many Dennis, people have all of us put each other to bed? It's hilarious. Really, Dennis, you might remember this story. We were over in Germany and we were late leaving for a town, and everybody was on the bus except for one guy. And that guy being John Layfield. So I'm not uh, gonna leave. I'm not gonna leave John. Everybody and you leave your boy. If they, you know, you leave everybody else, leave John. Said, yeah. No, I'm gonna go up and get him. So I go up, I, I get the key to his room, and I go in, he's not in his bed. So I hear the shower. I hear I hear I hear the bathroom, something rattling in the bathroom. So I walk in the bathroom. Harry's leaning up against the shower, both hands on the, on the shower. We've all been there, you know, with our head down. Yeah. And, uh, and the shower wall holding us up. Yeah. I said, John, what the hell are you doing? We got to go. We're late. Well, I'm taking a shower, Mr. Bristow. As soon as I get to the shower, <laughs> I'll be ready to go. Yeah. And I'll look. I said, okay. Then I'll look. I said, wouldn't it be good if you turned the water Turn on? Water. <laughs> yeah. That, right then, that most, the most important thing to him in the world was, I just need to get in the shower. That's yeah. All my effort and that, that, that was the night after that apple. Uh, That's uh, right. Uh, That's right. That's right. That's awesome. night. And, and, he me, and he told me, he said, I just found Glenn in his doorway. <laughs> he never made that. That's like a unicorn sighting. It's like, oh, yeah, I saw Glenn drunk. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah Tasquatch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got a storm coming. It's been yeah. bad. Jerry, uh, I work on the beach uh, at a uh, uh, fucking almost 100-year-old yacht club. It's the best. And uh, uh, the last couple days, they had to shut the beach down. They had pictures of the fish rolling up. We have red tide. Do you know what red tide is, John? The red snapper, right? No, no, the red tide. <laughs> it's the red damn, damn Texan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, Dennis, we're dealing with a Texan. Yeah, he's, a, okay. he's, a, he's, a, he's a converted Texan. Now he's right. sworn his allegiance to the Northeast, so he's a Yankee okay. Texan. Hey, wait a minute. All right. Well, now, do you know what red tide is? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a snap. Okay. Where the I'll heck explain. am I going to hear about a red tide from Sweetwater? Uh, true, true. Uh, but it's like a big thing. Okay, being... That we're the great, you know, we get to live in the greatest area ever. I fortunately born and raised here, Clearwater Beach, Tampa, Florida. Um, off the coast, maybe what, twice a year, Jerry? There's this algae bloom that uh, comes in and just like becomes like massive and it kills all the fish and the smell is just unbearable. Uh, it, it, we had a big port, like one like that over the last two days. And we have a guy, uh, I have a chef down on the beach uh, that does like beach order stuff, small stuff. And uh, after like two hours, he came in and there was people, those rich people who are still down there. They don't give a fuck. Uh, and uh, he was throwing up and, and it was bad. Yeah, it, it's horrible. It's like you can't get away from it either. 
It's bad. You can't it go comes. swimming. You can't get the fish. It kills our it done. kills our tourism. It's worse than that damn coronavirus on our on our yeah. on our on our damn tourism yeah. because of, because of the smell that of the dead fish, and then these people with these uh, multi million dollar homes uh, along the shoreline. Yeah. You, you see them out there, man. And I mean, and right up to their dock, right up to the yeah. back cage uh, swimming pool. There's there's thousands and millions of dead fish just there. And you, can't, you can't you can't breathe. People are tears are coming out of their eyes. It's so yeah. bad. I mean, it's much like out. one of Bradshaw's championship matches. Oh, not nice. That, that's just not sorry. Nice. Sorry, just kidding. Not nice. uh, are you sure? Uh, hey, let me say something to this really quick. Uh, I, I touched on it earlier, and uh, uh, you get a bad rap. I've known you for a long time. One of the uh, like you. What's, what's so one? Happy. You you really you're a dentist. You really got to uh, signify I'm, which one I'm of us got a bad about, rap. Because yeah, neither one of us is very well thought of outside this. Yeah. You will be Yoda, and we'll make Johnny uh, Obi Wan. Oh, that would make me Luke Skywalker. Awesome. Uh, yes, Jay, you, you, uh, yeah, you're, you're fucking. You took care of me. I love the territory ways. Like, like Jay, when I got there as the Godwins, uh, Jay was like, uh, "It's Tampa boy." That Steve Kearns boy. He was like, he always had an eye out for me, and he always took care of me, and I love you. But Johnny, uh, I found out that after uh, you told me, I think. Uh, when Henry got called up to WWF and I went wherever Japan did stuff that you were trying to get me to be your partner in Germany, you had mentioned something like that, or it might've been a dream. And I want to say, thank you very much. That was very nice of you. And people get, you know, people say shit about you, but I've known you for like 30 fucking years almost. And, uh, you're an awesome person, especially with all the shit you're doing now. That's good, and I'm uh, proud to call you a professional wrestler and my friend. And Jerry, I love you guys. So yeah, well, I love, love you. And love, you love you too, Dennis. But Dennis, take us back a little bit now. Before we got on this Zoom call, you were you were showing John and I. You just inherited a, a, a house, and and your family's been wrestling fan probably for the last 50, 60 years, and collectors of things. And you went my through the attic. And you found, show us what you found and tell us a little bit, a little bit about what you found and clear the, the whole deal, the Star Wars, everything. What, what, what go by I, you find up there? Talk about, uh, Johnny, I grew up, you know, I couldn't have asked. I know people say Minnesota, there's some Texas and everything. Uh, Tampa Sportatorium, the real Sportatorium. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my grandmother got kicked out of a wrestling event in early 60s for going out of her chair, my five foot two Italian grandmother threw, got thrown out of the Fort Homer Hesley Army Armory for uh, going after Mr. Fuji for attacking. It was probably, uh, see, that was a long time ago. So it probably was Jerry. I'm just kidding. It was, uh, yeah. And, and one of the other things they always talked about was Haystacks Calhoun falling out of the ring and landed in their lap. So my family has been wrestling. I met this guy when uh, I have a picture of uh, me and my brother at like 10 uh, with uh, him and uh, Jack. Uh, these are just some of the things. And there's probably hundreds of them. all these 70s and 80s pro wrestling illustrated and the wrestler. And oh, look at this. I said, listen, Mike Graham and Buzz Sawyer in a bloody dog collar match. Uh, and if I might just throw up. The one and only King. All right. Yeah, one and only. One and only King. Uh, and uh, also, um, my aunt was kind of, see, she kind of took the house from my grandparents when my grandparents got sick. And uh, so this was the house I grew up in. And uh, then uh, she never really let anybody into, like, you couldn't see this. But we always uh, had, back when we were little kids, we had all the Star Wars stuff and all the wrestling stuff and everything, and just gone over the years. And uh, so a little while ago, me and my brother, my brothers came over and we went upstairs and uh, in the attic and started pulling out boxes, uh, unopened original Star Wars uh, on the placard. Uh, millions of little figures with the guns, which I'm finding are the weirdest things are the most important. 
there was some G.I. Joe boxes that stuff came in, the big ones back when you were a kid. And they were like, I figured throw them away. Uh, my friend owns a toy memorabilia store. So I had him, you know, I, I just pulled it down and he came and, and got everything. Uh, he took that beat up. I was going to throw away a fucking box of an old GI Joe amphibious vehicle. And he's selling it for $377 or 270, just the box. The, wow. the vehicle is like 400 bucks. Isn't it crazy? And I got all these things, and I told, I don't know, you you weren't listening to this one. Uh, I, I got to take a lot of our old magazines. My brother, thank God, keeps everything. Uh, and uh, when I got up and able to meet, like, you know, we were Dusty and everything. I think it was in WWE, I was saying. I took a bunch of our old 78 PWI and the wrestler magazines to Dusty and had him sign a bunch of them. I'll send you guys the pictures. They're on my phone when we're done. And uh, our, our piece de resistance in wrestling memorabilia or whatever, this is something that no one could ever have, ever. Uh, it was 70s, seven or eight or something. And uh, our grandparents took us to uh, Bayfront Center, which is where the bigger shows were. And Dusty, it was the night Dusty won the belt from Harley and uh, double blood and everything. And, you know, just awesome. And then after everybody left, me and my me and my older brother climbed underneath the chairs and to the railing, and we took that program and we stuck it in the blood that we found on the floor. Great sanitary, right? And then we uh, took it home, and uh, my brother uh, has it in perfect condition. He keeps everything in the boxes and that. And uh, then I got Dusty to sign that because it's got him on the on the front of it with the belt the new champ is dusty and he signed it and it's covered in his blood and harley's wow blood. so all we need is a, a a healthy ovum and we can grow our own dusty and harley race <laughs> we have the dna <laughs> that's right you know, Dennis, i didn't realize until i was looking at some your bio today you're getting ready for the interview you're, you're uh, i needed the money for those pictures i'm sorry john <laughs> you said the cowboy hat made me look good anyway go ahead your stepdad was a wrestler ron slinker yes i i met him uh jared, jared i met him uh i was bouncing at a bar and met some guys going through current school and uh said take me with you and i went through current school and then in that during that time period he was wrestling there. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, he, uh, Jerry knows him. Uh, one of the nicest, give you the, you know, biggest heart, everything. Yeah, the former, PTSD, form, former Tampa policeman, right? Former Tampa yes. narcotics this is, policeman. This is the backstory. Um, former Captain Marine Recon, the special forces there. Badass, uh, badass. Ranked in the top 10 for over 15 years in full contact karate. Yeah. Then yeah. became a Tampa vice detective. And then became a massive drug addict. And uh, I met him, uh, uh, unfortunately. And uh, I met him when I first started. And him and my mom got together. And uh, and I, I can't ever thank for him for the influence he had on me. You remember Ron, don't you, Jerry? Very well. I would, I've, yeah. I've traveled down the road with Ron. And I always had, a, you know, because of his police background and everything, yeah. his back, back stories. And. John, I mean, back in the, it's hard to believe, but back in, back in the, even in the late, early 60s, I mean, there was still a lot of mafia running around Tampa. Dude, and, he and, was and, so and, hooked up with them. And, and Dennis's stepdad was right in that, right in that target of, of the mafia guy. Matter of fact, I, I, correct me if he might have even had a hit on his life at one time uh, because uh, uh, they had busted some of the biggest yeah. known. Uh, narcotic Trapper guys counties. and, and yeah. the history of of, uh, of Tampa here. So yeah, down here, uh, down here, uh, our Gotti and uh, Castellano was Santo yeah. Tropicani, Santo and Trapper it was some, yeah, it was someone that he investigated, and through that became friends. When I was going through wrestling school, he took me to 2001 odyssey the strip club uh and while i was going to wrestling school i was working at odyssey and mons and he took me to meet uh not the old man but his Junior. son and Junior. yeah and uh, he gave me the job at odyssey and i also uh nobody's listening to this right <laughs> no. I, worked for a pimp no. yeah, is, uh, 
I worked for, uh, uh, I was 19 years old, uh, just come back from college, played football, uh, Salem uh, College in West Virginia, had my shoulder totally reconstructed within six months. So they're like, your football career is over. Uh, and I'm like, then why am I at college? So <laughs> I fucking left and uh, went and I was bouncing to the clubs and, and, uh, and did all that. And uh, then uh, I was six, seven, right out of college, 320 something uh, and uh, bouncing to this bar, but I'm still a 19 year old kid. And uh, they were like, oh, hey, I, the, first, the first one was this pimp that I knew who was very nice. He was a very nice man to me and everything. I can only treat people the way they treat me. I would occasionally, his friends would need ride places. And I was occasionally, you know, I would like give them a ride to wherever and uh, just wait for them outside and make sure they were okay and take them home. You know, I was just like a taxi, nothing <laughs> illegal there. And, uh, and uh, then some other things. And uh, one day he called me and he said, hey, I need your help moving this guy out of my house. And my dumbass 19 brain's like, oh, okay. I come over, move some furniture and everything. So I get there and he opens the door and he's like, all right, he's going to be here. Uh, th this pimp, we'll call him Tyrone. Uh, <laughs> I won't call him Tyrone. Yeah, that was, actually, that was actually his name. So I figured that was <laughs> uh, uh He's probably dead. But if not, Tyrone, what's up? He paid me well. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm gonna come over and help him move. And I walk in the door, and he and uh, he's got his girlfriend and this other guy's girlfriend, and this guy were all living there. And apparently, Tyrone also liked to deal vitamins and other powdered <laughs> substances to people. And uh, so he kind of got this guy's girlfriend uh, addicted, and she had a big bill. And this guy was like, "We're not fucking paying it because you made her blah 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 blah." So. Uh, I went over there expecting to be a, a furniture mover and uh, I walked in and he said, all right, this guy will be back in about 15 minutes and literally pulled out a gun and handed it to me. And he says, here, take, you want this? And I said, no, if it gets that bad, you hold it. And then my wheels are turning. I'm probably not here to move the couch. So I'm like, yeah. And, and this is where my bouncing and, and all this stuff this is where I am fucking uh, Michael Jordan when it comes to this. I, I'm a big, dumb white kid from fucking Clearwater Beach, Florida. Uh, and now I'm in like the, the, you know, the ghettos of Jamaica or South Africa, but I can blend. So now I'm like, all right, there's a gun and this guy, I'm not moving his furniture. So, all right, we got to make this happen with nobody getting, you know, big. Luckily, I'm ginormous at the time. And I'm such a nice guy. I'm like, you know, hey, he, like he really wants you to move. He goes, I'm, I said, I'm here to help you move, whatever you want. And the guy's like, oh, you got big man in. You got big man in. And he was like, no, man, he just stopped by. I'm like, hey, buddy, it's okay, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just supposed to. He just asked me to help you move some stuff out of here. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, all right, all right. He's like, if big man wasn't here, I'm like, dude, no, yeah, it's cool. So I got him and his girlfriend out. And then Tyrone gave me a thousand dollars and said, go get me a new front and back door lock at Lowe's or wherever it was, Home Depot and replace them and give me the keys and keep the change. And I was like, Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So I made about 700 and then I became a wrestler. I and thought you were going to say changed. you had to carry a dead body out. Not holy. Cow, I would Lord. not do that. I would only do that for you people. Or oh, thank you. BSK. Thank you for yeah. not telling that story. Thank you for not telling right. that story. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, uh, there was a philosopher that said a true friend will help you move, but a real friend will help you move a body. <laughs> How many bodies? You guys are real. Oh, God. You know what? When I thought about the other day, I spent with all the meat processing I do right now, uh, I spent probably, oh, my God. God knows how many, probably, I did two years straight as a butcher, and then all the other shit I've done in the random 18 years of cooking, uh, I could, and in my twisted mind, uh, yeah, I would know the best way to disassemble a body. I had to think, where to, I have to kill them at work, and then break them down at work, and then put them into small packages and bury them in the freezer, and then on one side of my club is uh, the inlet, and the other side is the ocean. 
So every like two days, I'll go throw one on this side and one on that side and the sharks will eat it. And if nobody finds it and I'm the one in charge of the freezer, so nobody will find it. The key is I've got to get somebody that I want to kill to my work. There is some people there I want to kill, but I, I don't know. But like you said, nobody's watching. <laughs> well, nobody's watching you, you have a list until now <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah now there's a few people with letters behind their name right <laughs> right the little yeah. thing <laughs> all right we got his address <laughs> so what was the progression you get in you steve kern found you at a bar i mean that's not nearly every wrestling no story. every wrestling story starts that way no no uh well it was a gay bar and uh, I was <laughs> dancing. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. And uh, no, I uh, come back from football. Uh, I uh, didn't know what to do. Went to JC, wanted to be a cop. Um, and uh, I was going through there. And then I got a job at this old uh, big nightclub uh, in 88, uh, 89 called Mako's on Gulf to Bay. Do you remember, Jerry? Huge remember disco Mako's, nightclub. Yeah. yeah. Mako's. And I, I got a job there. And uh, what kind of got me my fame was I'm literally right out of college, 19 years old. One night uh, I'm there and these two guys are standing in the way of the girls' bathroom just being dicks. But they were big. Uh, they were being dicks. And uh, I went and politely asked them to leave. And uh, they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. So I gave them like five minutes. And then I went back and I said, I I'm going to give you five more minutes. You guys need to go now because there's been some complaints and you're blocking it and it's a fire, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, just nodded at me. Like, so I went directly, you know, it was a straight shot. It was like a hallway and both the bathrooms were here. And then the hallways here. And I'm at the end with the bar. So it's like a shoot and, uh, uh, they're fucking obviously not doing anything. And I go to them, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. They said, man, we'll leave when we're ready. And I said, listen, Brad, Chuck, come on, buddy. No, it wasn't John. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, I said, no, you need to go. So I grabbed the larger guy by the elbow, which in my travels, I found if you can control, you need a joint. You know that. You can control the joint with more than if you grab the. the... So uh, I grabbed him and then grabbed his wrist and started pushing him that way. And then there was a, a smaller uh, black guy with him, probably about, I don't know, five, eight, but a good 220. Uh, and he leg dived me uh, around the waist. And the other, the bigger white guy is punching me. And I'm in the hallway. So I'm just pulling them back while they're both hitting me. And I know the bar's coming up behind me. So as I get close, I just spin them and I slam the white guy in the bar and I need the little black guy and I threw him and our back door was right there and I threw him out and I grabbed the white guy and I put him in front of me and I had just spent six months doing football drills and I just hit the sled with him right out the door <laughs> into the guy, you know, boom. And uh, then police came and everything. Turns out it was the starting center and the uh, second string running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, I went to uh, school to JC the next day. I was like, dude, I just got into a fight with a buck. Blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, whatever. And then that night on like Channel 8 News or something, it was a big article. I was like, ah. So then I got a little bit of name there. And some of the guys were like, hey, we're going to a wrestling school in Tampa. And uh, I was like, dude, yeah, right. My whole life wrestling and all my children have been my family's two big huh. things. I wrestled and in food, I got to cook for Susan Lucci. And I told her all about, you know, oh, this is uh, honor. I've also cooked for Emerald, Bobby Flay, Wolfgang Puck. Yeah, it's all that. So then I went down to Steve Kern School, and uh, it was a, a luminary class. There were some people I don't remember the names of, but it was me, Mike Awesome. Uh, Dustin was still bouncing around with us right before he started. Uh, I can't remember the other people. But it was in the basement of the real sportatorium in Tampa, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was uh, it was a ring. And I don't know if you ever were in there, Johnny, but it's a small basement with a thing. It was where they used to film TV back when I was a kid, and uh, it's just it's like if ghosts could live in a place, kind of like Texas Sportatorium, but a lot smaller. So everything is right there. And then the, the, the door, it's a very small area. 
But when when I finally got the call up, uh, it was like six months, and I I fought Ron Slinker uh, on TV and uh, Diamond Dallas Page and the greatest announcer, bar none, ever in the history of the world, and no one can argue, Gordon Sully, uh, announced all my first shit, and then uh, and then he got me to Memphis, and then while I was wrestling, Ho Chi Win. Uh, he was going as a Vietnamese guy because Kern's dad was like, uh, you know, uh, a POW in the yeah. uh, war and all that. So it was like that natural heat. And I had a match with uh, with him, which turned out to be Tarzan Goto from uh, Japan, uh, Onita's friend from FMW and, you know, Young Boys and all that. And he was wrestling me in uh, uh, Sebring Rotor or Rodeo Arena. And uh he had those like ninja shoes with the, just the lines on them and he would stop the shit out of me. And then one night I came back and I had like fucking uh, a barcode of like, look like gig marks across <laughs> my head. And he took me around to show me uh, that to everyone. Cause I never said nothing. And I'll tell you why. And uh, then uh, uh, took me to Japan and I got to do, the hardcore shit, uh, the bombs and the fucking bob wire and shit, and uh, wow. then came back and then WCW. I walked in, did uh, a dark match. Dusty had already known me uh, with Joey Mags, the best. And uh, after the match, and I was the beginning. Dusty came all the way around the arena from Gorilla and said, "Tex, awesome. This is uh, Mark." Uh, he's going to be your partner. He wears a mask. You guys are from Texas. Figure it out. And uh, so that night, me and Henry uh, went to the Ramada Inn in Atlanta, where everybody stayed, and uh, had some beverages. First night we ever met and had some beverages and uh, 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 shared the company of a young woman uh, conversationally and such. And uh, just, I, I couldn't ask because I wouldn't know what to ask for in a better partner uh, WCW to WWE I mean if if the Road Warriors thing hadn't happened and he hadn't broken his neck God who knows where we could get I always get a lot of people like oh when you guys started doing Southern Justice that was it oh you guys are going to take off but your partner had to go and break his neck I was like yeah what an asshole right I'm like uh -huh. fuck you guys but then I became Midian so <laughs> you know, if, if Henry, I think you're right. If Henry hadn't broke his neck, you guys would have been there for another 10, 15 years as a tag team. As, as someone who has legitimately laced him up and gone toe to toe with him on in a WWE ring, horrible idea. I don't know if anyone's ever said that, but both of was a terrible idea. Anyway, uh, one of the cock strongest and just fucking a man, right? Um, I saw him. In WCW, I walk into a gym, Sting's gym. Uh, I was there because the, uh, I wanted to bang the uh, lady behind the counter. I am not me and Road Dog. They were all, every town, we would all travel together. They would all go to the gym, and me and him would go to the movies or something like that. And me and Brian are the only two that haven't had any major knee, back, you know, any of that surgery. Huh. You turn into jelly when they hit you, and you can do it. I learned that very well on a clothesline from some such person. <laughs> just go rip. I've had people ask me. I say, just jump in the air a little bit so he doesn't break your jaw and go completely limp, and it looks <laughs> awesome. Henry had a fantastic clothesline, too. Oh, my goodness. The only move Vince ever requested in a match, I'm working with Henry uh, in a singles match, and they, they said that whoever the agent was, it may have been Jerry, came in and said, yeah. uh, Vince wants to see a double close. Line. Double good, fine. <laughs> said, oh. Everything else, everything else just went out the window, right? How can we make this fucking awesome? So Henry asked yeah. me, basically he's asking me, am I going to double cross him, which I wouldn't do because I love Henry. And he said, oh, he said, you mean not take it or not give it? He said, he said, how are you going to take it? I said, I'm just going to throw my feet straight up. He goes, all right. Yeah. We hit it uh, to this day. I've been in car wrecks that were not yeah. as violent as that one. And planes and trains. That's right. I think you have to wreck it. You've been in a wreck on every mode of transportation, haven't you? I have, yeah. Have you ever been a motorcycle wreck? I've laid one over, not a bad one. So I I've done that too. 
And it was that remember. when Bruce Pritchard riding shotgun with you? Yeah, that's uh, right. Dude, I would, I, we were, when uh, Undertaker kind of stopped full-time, once a year I would go out to his house and just roll around with him uh, before Mania. And uh, one day he was like, hey, you want to take the, my bike up the driveway? And it's the bike that he got with his first WrestleMania check. And his driveway, by the way, is a half a mile, you know? It's all windy and shit. And I uh, uh, didn't tell him that me and his uh, brother-in-law were riding all the bikes yesterday. I just went, oh, wow, what an honor. Yeah, of course I want to ride this one. And uh, so I get on it and I go about 10 feet and I hit cow shit and I slide it and I lay it down and I oh. bust the handlebar and it shoots me up. And luckily we had just been rolling around for like an hour and a half. So I was super loose. It shoots me up. I did a flip and a roll and landed on my feet. And I looked dead ass at him and I said, I'm so sorry. And the only thing I can say is thank God he was watching because imagine going to, ex hey, remember your WrestleMania bike? I just fought, scraped the whole fucking side of it, broke the handlebars, the pegs. Earlier that day, they had just put that motorcycle up on eBay. Yep, he told me that. He was going to sell it the next day and, <laughs> and you wrecked it. <laughs> yeah. I do things. This is the, the I will we'll go on Undertaker for a minute, which was the last time I saw Johnny at that thing. Boy, what a time, huh? Woo! I think we gave all those youngsters a little bit, uh, a, a little taste of the old, uh, the old thing. I honestly, when I get done working, I'll drink like three beers, uh, four or five, like today's my day off. So I might get four or five of them in, but I, I don't drink anymore. I can't, it just takes too much and it doesn't do anything for me. And Taker made us drink so much. The next day, he, uh, I went down uh, the, after the first night to the bar again. And the bartender goes, dude, you guys drank seven bottles of Jack Daniels. I was like, oh, Ooh. just still hurting and everything. And I went to Mark. I said, dude, he just said last night we drank seven bottles of Jack Daniels. He goes, fuck, I guess we're getting old. I was like, that right there is the most Undertaker thing I have ever heard in my life. And, uh, yeah, and I in shit like this, the motorcycle, one morning back in the olden days, uh, Undertaker had a house here in Florida, three stories. And uh, he had golf the next morning, and uh, I was there for some reason because it was a giant house, and I didn't want to go to my apartment. And uh, also had a little, uh, a little beverages. And uh, a little back in those days, uh, me and Road Dog were very into the little square pieces of paper. Your people would call them the, the mushrooms, Jerry, the hallucinogens, if you will. Yeah. So this is like 93 or four. We had just moved him and Jody back from, uh, oh, RIP Jody and Bobby. Oh, we'll get to that. Um, we had just drove back from Atlanta to move down here and, uh, so he's got to go play golf and uh, he comes up at like fucking six in the morning downstairs and I'm standing there with my hand over his giant fucking TV uh, and I was drinking like vodka and cranberry and I'd thrown up red all over the TV and the carpet and I'm standing there just out of my fucking mind and here comes <coughs> Taker down the stairs to get ready to go play golf and he should have just thrown me over the fucking ledge into the water. Uh, he took me to bed, gave me some water, and then quietly whispered to me, if everything isn't exactly as it was before, by the time I get home, you're a dead man. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't sleep too much. I immediately got up. <laughs> and everything. But yeah, I think that's what it is. He kind of considers me like his pet. <laughs> I was with I was with uh, uh, Godfather and Rikishi and Sabio and uh, uh, Undertaker, Godfather, Rikishi. So we all have a text chain. We talk to each other every day. Uh, and I'm like, I'm literally the only one here that isn't an adult. That first night ended with, under, or with Godfather holding me up against my hotel room door because I can't stand and Taker looking at me with fucking daggers in his eyes, so mad at me, because when I get drunk, I tend to slap people. And uh, he was, uh, Godfather's holding me up, and I'm looking at him, looking at me, and throughout it all, I had this moment of clarity, 
And I go, dude, if this doesn't feel like old times, nothing will. And they both smiled, and then I smacked him, and then I drove him <laughs> in my hotel room. <laughs> I, saw the uh, video. I saw the video from the uh, Oh, my Everybody God. Everybody ends up on the floor. Everyone. Our instructions were, show them how we used to do it. <laughs> Jerry, it was during I, COVID, so there's hardly anybody at the bar. And these guys were all they start to go to the elevator. Somebody grabs somebody. They fall down. Somebody tries to help. Next thing you know. I think it was me and Henry in the elevator, yeah. <laughs> you got a human pile. Just yeah. all these bodies of the bones. Uh, Godfather, like you see giant bodies. <laughs> giant bodies. Huh. And the bar was probably full, and they looked around and saw you guys drink, and they decided we better get out of here. <laughs> That's yeah. the reason that the bar was first empty. night, the only other people that hung and uh, who uh, got into the act and fell off his chair, and we had to pick up a couple times. One of my favorites, uh, Timmy White. Timmy yeah. White was there with <laughs> us, yeah. You were there, Johnny. Booker was there. Yeah. I think Flair was there. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mitty and, and we tried to get Timmy White on this show, and he got so frustrated with us on the side yeah. road in Texas. He pulled off the side of the road in Texas, trying yeah. to get on the Zoom with us. He got so pissed off at us. He threw his phone out the window. We hadn't heard from Timmy White since, and this been yeah. six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Probably killed himself. Oh, like the angle? That was so bad. Anyway, there was, yeah, a, it's, there was a go ahead, John. in St. Louis in cahoots. And uh, we, we all I remember that. We all wanted to guess Big Show's weight. And so, yeah. uh, so anyway, everybody put up like 10 bucks. It was like a lot of money. If you remember. Was it like a steel thing? How did you have a scale? They had some scale. They were going to weigh him. I forget what it was. They're going to weigh him. Okay. I can't remember what it was. But, they, but Vince said they're going to weigh everybody. Right. I think I think we had to take him out to to the uh, stock market stock arena out there uh, and for the for the cattle scales if I remember correctly. Wait a minute, why this wasn't a drunk night? It was everybody had to get weighed legit. Everybody yeah, everybody was yeah, everybody okay. was getting, Vince wanted to know everybody's weight. I remember that. Vince wanted to know everybody's weight, so and we weighed everybody, but show was the last one. Well, well how are we gonna weigh that big sum of gun? So. That's it. Well, we're, I think we're in Kansas City or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. And he said, well, this is the beef, beef capital of the world right yeah. here. Take Just find a butcher the damn, shop. Take him yeah. out to the damn uh, sock arena out there. They got those yeah. big scales out there. So yeah. we had somebody load him up in the damn uh, car. How uh, embarrassing for the fucking guy. Poor guy. <laughs> I mean, but he's not a fat. He's just a giant. He's big. You know? He's just big. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. How, much, how close were him and Mark mm -hmm. Henry? But at that time, of... but at that time, he was a little fat since he's yeah. not here. Uh, no, we're not around. Yeah, yeah, fuck house. him. Yeah. Fuck Joe. <laughs> fuck Joe. So everybody put in $10 to guess Big Show's weight. So uh, Jeff Hardy guess is like 1,832 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking and love that kid. <laughs> oh, my God. Just no, no, no. I make I I, in milliliters. So... The, when they came the winner, I won the weight. It was, I forget what it was, 470 something. And I won. Oh, I would assume five, yeah. I won like $500 or $600. Get the fuck out. And so we go, where'd you go, Midian? Where'd you go? Oh, I'm trying to find my Jack Briscoe uh, <laughs> Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Sorry. So we're at St. Louis the next day. So I go oh, to the Cowboy Bar. And I said, guys, this is the company. I'll put it all on the bar until we run out of money. I said, just whatever you do. So I can put all the winning See. down. Everybody drinks whatever they want. So one of the cops comes in and goes, hey, we just found your drunk referee on one of our squad cars. It was Timmy White. He had passed. Oh, my him. God. <laughs> I love that guy. I love him so much. He is awesome. And I know uh, even more so than me, you guys got, you got a special connection with Timmy, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I love is, Tim. Timmy's. He's a good one. Him and I remember who I was always super cool and I loved hanging with was Arnie Scolan. He was super Arnie. cool. Yeah. Arnie was awesome. And one of my other favorites, who uh, I'm ashamed to say now after watching The Dark Side of the Ring, uh, Grizzly Smith in WCW was so nice. 
Oh, that was a, that the... was a th- but Mitty, and that was the thing about Grizz. Grizz was so sharp. He, I mean, he led a damn double life, and none of us even yeah. knew oh. about it. Oh, I mean, we we all right. we all heard the rumors. You know, he likes yeah. young girls, but yeah. there was never any any evidence yeah. of it or anything like that. More like J Lo likes young girls kind of yeah. thing. It wasn't too inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, when uh, you know, I mean, you had heard the rumors, but you really didn't know. And he, but at the arena, he was he was so professional. And I mean, awesome. I've met him before I even got into business because Jack was already in the business when I met sure. the guy. And uh, yeah. he was always so polite and so helpful. You know, like hey, you need he was. Kid. But yeah, it was, was a shock. It was it was Shocking, a shock when right? all, all that all come to the and, surface. And there. Uh, several weeks into my WWE career, uh, me and Henry are going to a show in Texas. I rented a brand new Cadillac and Jake the Snake is riding with us and says, hey, can you guys take a cab to the building? I want to borrow the car and go get my daughter who I haven't seen in forever and then I'll meet you guys at the show. And we're like, Jake Snake, all right, of course, sure. <laughs> Three, four days later, still no Jake. I'm like, I think I should call the office now. So I called you guys and everything got taken care of. Yeah, but he apparently disappeared with it. (laughs) Family, that family, man. Although the smartest people, geniuses have problems, you know, with reality sometimes. That's what I'm told. Yeah, Jake was Jake was a brilliant guy. I mean, Jake had a Jake had a mind for the business. The best psychologist ever was really incredible oh i had out of the blue this is weird i don't know if i told you one of you this this is another thing with me that taker uh warns people about i forget i tell people things so i tell them a lot you know again it happens uh but i know how to make a souffle so fuck you uh and (laughs) i got facebook i'm never on facebook and i uh went on it uh like maybe about three weeks ago and there was a message from a girl that said, I just wanted to thank you for being so nice and helpful to me when I was a teenager. You know, I really appreciate it. Sometime if I'm in town, I'd love to get lunch or whatever. And thank you. Uh, Molly Holly. So uh, I was like, okay. And I've been catfished a few times on some women. <laughs> Believe it or not, guys. <laughs> uh, and uh, so then I went to her Facebook site. So it was her. She gave me her number and everything. And we met uh, a few days ago for lunch. And I'll tell you this, still, the it's like uh, energy around this girl. She is so positive and happy and nice. I don't know how much time either one of you spend around her, but she's so fucking cool. She's really nice. She literally wanted to thank me for being nice to her when she was starting. Wow. She was. She's literally such a nice girl. You're thinking, I'm not sure you need to even be. Some, yeah. <laughs> she's such yeah. A nice girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Whereas, uh, like, yeah. And uh, oh, the other thing was uh, the when I first started, um, I with the head with uh, getting stopped on and taken to Japan. That was because of who I have to mention, uh, good and bad. The Nasty Boys, when I first started, were the biggest bullies in the world. I had a different partner every week. They beat the shit. Jerry, you remember the fucking Nasties in like the late 80s? Oh, they beat yeah. the shit out of everyone. I had a different partner every week just because I thought that's how wrestling was. You go <laughs> out there, you get your ass kicked for 15 minutes, and then you lay down. I'm like, cool. I'm having fun. And <laughs> that helped me the first time I ever worked with Dick Slater who I fought back and he th- told me afterwards, thank you. A lot of the young people don't fight back. And then I have to eat them up and it makes a shitty match. And I was like, well, I just thought you, I thought you fought. And then in matches, there's one, somebody sent me, it was me and Viscera against you and Ron and nobody sold shit for like eight minutes. <laughs> we just beat the crap out of each other. And it was somebody like Zabisco or somebody on the commentary. And they're like, I'm begging somebody to sell something. I love trading. Uh, there are certain people that have uh, certain things. Two Cold Scorpio is my doppelganger. I would wrestle him every day for the rest of my life. But there's people that I have great timing with. Uh, Vader, uh, I was I love wrestling Vader, which you don't hear a lot. Uh, and uh, I had great timing on his punches. And John, too. 
it's very difficult when you're doing trade-offs to get somebody's timing. But John's got such a whoop, uh, swooping thing that you can get in. It, it, I don't know. You, you tell me. We worked a few times. I thought what you're really saying. What you're saying, Dennis, is he's slow. <laughs> he's a little slow. <laughs> no, but I, I always really loved working with you. And then back to the thing, people. You're you're not a bully. You've done bully things. We all have done bully things. But you're a fucking great guy, dude. You do so much shit, and I'm proud to call you a professional wrestler. And more so, my friend. Now that I have your phone number, eBay. <laughs> right. We worked a ton together. Me, me, and Barry Wonder. Yeah. Time yeah. You. Well, one of my idols. One of my idols. Yeah. Then, well, uh, well, was he Barry here when you were first starting, Dennis? Yes. Man, he was, when I started, was one, it was he, Dusty, Barry, uh, fucking Blackjack Mulligan. I had the bull rope that Blackjack gave me the second night they made me a cowboy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, do you remember the time we were in uh, the old Howard Johnson's there by the Boston airport? And I wake up and I look over and I see Barry Wyndham and he's got scabs on. Him. And I thought, oh my God, he got into a fight last night. And then I look and there's some blood on the pillow and I thought, I must have gotten a fight too. And I'm thinking, huh. what if I got in a fight with Barry? I said, no way. We're too good of friends. So I'm sitting there and then we start looking at each other and we're, we both can't remember. Then we see you guys and you guys have got scabs on you. You guys climbed into our room through the window and jumped me and Barry in bed. <laughs> ah, okay. And none of us remembered it. <laughs> yes. Okay. This was a thing that me and Henry would do. Uh, uh, I was going to say to this day, but, you know, it'd be a little harder now. I'd probably hear our bones creak and sneaking. Um, we were really, really, I mean, we did this so much to the guns. Uh, we traveled a lot in separate cars with those guys. And what we would do would, uh, we would get into the rooms and when somebody wasn't doing or looking, you would go into their room and unlock the in-between door, right? But then like put a thing underneath it so it was shut in case you would like touch it, it's completely shut. And then we would go out and get all fucking hammered and everything and then come back and wait and picture me and Henry's hillbilly giant asses with our heads pressed against the fucking wall, listening for him snoring or starting to go to sheep, sleep, and then kick the door in and beat the shit out of him and turn the beds over on him. Something we actually learned from Undertaker one night. He got so mad at us because we threw him into his bedroom. Uh, it was a, a Tampa one. And uh, so then, uh, like Cool Hand Luke does, it isn't like, oh, well, I'll wait and I'll do this and set this. He fucking kicks the door open, attacks me, throws me over the two beds, and I fall in between them. He starts taking a pillow and beating the shit out of Henry. Henry falls in between them, and then he turns both of the mattresses over on top of us. And then he walks out, and we're all laughing our asses off. And as we look up at him, he walks by the door. He turns his head. It's like a fucking movie. He opens our mini fridge, and this is an expensive hotel. He opens the mini fridge and tilts it, and it's where when you pull it out, the things fucking come, tilts it up and shakes everything out of it. So we also had to pay like three hundred and fifty dollars for an entire <laughs> mini fridge. But yeah, that's where it came from. So then we would like find somebody and we like if you, the key is you get in line with them at the thing, and they're like, oh. It's like, oh, hey, uh, can we get something close to each other? We're going to go eat dinner and everything. And then nine out of ten times, you would get a combining room. And then you just wait. Usually while they're in the shower, you go and you flip the little switch so the door is open, and then you get in there. Oh, also, I'm sorry. I forgot one of the most important things. Uh, or you wait till they're asleep, and you go in there, and you crank the fucking heat on as high as it will go. <laughs> Cause you're super drunk and passed out and you're not getting up and you don't know what's going on. So the, the heater in the, in the room after drinking is a very good one. I don't know if we ever did that to you. you, know, you didn't I, do that. I did that to, uh, to our friend, uh, Bruce Pritchard several times. Bruce, was, isn't that we, 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 we'd be in a hotel drinking and everything. And you know, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce is a wuss when it comes to drinking. He'd drink about two beers and oh, he'd he'd pass out. Him. Yeah. So I'd start walking out. I walked by that thermostat. It was always there by the door as you exit. So I just hit yeah. that uh, 
hit that little red button about 15 times. And yeah. He'd wake up, he'd yeah. call me Briscoe. I'm, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sweating. I'm sweating like crazy. What do you Well, do? imagine do you do? if it was out like with Johnny and that, where as much as we used to drink back in the day, so you're already hot and sweaty, and the air conditioner is the most miserable thing. It's hilarious. Good times. <laughs> hey, I imagine they do stuff like that nowadays still, right? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> hey, was, it uh, was it during the match with uh, Henry and Triple H that Owen put his hogs in Vince's yes, office? Yes, in Vince's office, yeah. That's an awesome one. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's that? that? Tell, tell us that story. Uh, well, they brought uh, this was before I got here, but I heard it from both of them a million times. Um, for the hog pen match, do you remember that? That Hunter, oh, yeah, yeah, that was okay. Beth, Beth, Bethlehem, PA. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and they brought a bunch of pigs, and the pig dude showed up and was like, Where do you want these pigs? And fucking Owen, as Owen is, took him to Vince's office and stuck like, What was that, five or seven pigs? Yeah. in the office oh. and just shut the door so then he goes and opens the door and it's full of pigs and i think they got a shot of it for for a magazine or something <laughs> how, yeah how did the uh, how the bsa crew start because by the time i got there everybody's already you guys are already bsk did you did you how did yeah it B, bsk not bsa bsk yeah it's BSK. Oh, boy it's scouts so of america yeah boy yeah. scouts of america I was a Boy Scout of America. Well, John, well, John yeah. was an Eagle Scout, so that's all. Oh, <laughs> I was a bear. I stopped before I got the Eagle. We went to the one, Jerry. Where was the Boy Scout camp on Boy Scout Road or something? Right? Boy Scout Road. That's where we yeah. Boy Scout Road, man. <laughs> that's where we went. Yeah. Uh, that's, right well, down, that's, uh, right, that's right down the road here, matter of fact. Oh, is it? Yeah. Are you by Kern? No, uh, Kern's over oh, there. Yeah. Like, you know, you know oh, where yeah. Undertaker used to live. The big snowball yeah. is. I live. Yeah. I live down the, down the street from there. That big basketball player had that giant house built right across the street with the Buffalo. I did uh, a private wine dinner at that house. It was crazy. Hey, is it true? Is it true that his bar, uh, his pool bath, uh, he had this gigantic pool. And uh, and this kitchen, and I always always heard that when the girls dress room, he had all two way mirrors in that dress. Oh, room. I didn't know about that. And Ho Ho Hooter built the kitchen for him, so yeah, when he would have a nice. party, when he'd have a party, all the Hooters girls would come out and 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 work the party and cater the party for him. This was some kind of benefit, so uh, strictly fancy food, no Hooter girls. One one hooter. <laughs> now, and you see that that part, uh, on the bottom, the kitchen, uh, the chef's kitchen or the uh, butler's kitchen or whatever, where they have the second one, was down in the game room, and this game room was insane. Every trip, it was when the basketball, yeah, all the basketball shit, uh, video games, pool tables, and along the entire thing, it was probably like I don't know, sixty foot long. There was about a four foot fish tank, the entire length of the fucking thing. It right. was super cool. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I went there one time. It was oh, BSK. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. cool. How did it start? Okay, so uh, it literally started with uh, Yoko and them like to play dominoes. And, uh, you know, it was, he was like, BSK, that's how he would call it in the locker room because dominoes are called bones. Right. And we were the Bone Street crew, meaning Domino's. Uh, and uh, I'm not allowed to tell you that. Unfortunately, it's all out in the open now, but you know it is. Yes, okay. Represent. And if I always, if I don't mind saying, I always considered you and Ronnie kind of fringe members anyway. So oh, you're you. kind of there. Yeah. Um, and we, we did always hang out with you guys. We were always you always did. Yeah. Exactly. I, uh, still, I, I still members. Yeah, uh, Yoko and, and Taker started it, and then, uh, you know, Kishi, Savio, Godfather, uh, Henry, uh, and Fuji, and, and Crush. A lot of people didn't know Crush was in it when they were doing the thing for Undertaker's thing, and we were all talking about it on our little BSK thing. Uh, they were like, Godfather was like, was Crush in it? I don't know. And then somebody said, was Adam Bomb in it? I said, no, Adam Bomb was not in it. Uh, but it was just friends who 
hung around. We all went to strip clubs. We all liked the same music and, and everything. You were right there with us. Everyone tries to make it a, well, it was formed so we could keep the click under control. Fuck, dude. I hung out with Sean and fucking uh, Hunter more, you know, as much as I did my friends. There was never any heat between any of them. I'm sure there's heat. I don't know if, like, Godfather and Scott Hall have some kind of heat or if Rakishi and, you know, Bret Hart have... But uh, everybody there uh, has nothing but good things to say about everyone except for you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's literally what I told everybody. I've been asked all the time. But how oh, they want to make it into something that it's not. But Between the clique and yeah. BNK and the Canadians, and there wasn't any heat. We, there wasn't any heat. When everyone is, I found two things in wrestling. When everyone is making a lot of money, everybody's super happy and they lighten up on the drug test. And when no one is making any money, everyone is unhappy and the drug tests are all the time, which doesn't you're make one, sense because we, you're, you're, they're expensive. <laughs> you want Dennis, I was, I was, of course, in the, working in the office at that time there. And you I, were you in know, the WWE I, when we were there? Yeah, and I, all, you were? All, all, uh, yeah, all, all that, uh, all that, all that rumor stuff about the heat and everything. I never, there was never any heat among us. That, that was probably one of the most successful get along crews that I've ever been around in my life. Yeah. Everybody, we're all making money and everybody was yes. happy. You know? There wasn't time for and, heat, you know. And think about this. I, uh, I was just talking to uh, Kevin Nash last week. Uh, we did this B tour, you know, because it was this lake and I found these t-shirts on anyone. But uh, you had, in WCW time when we were there, you had the big shows, uh, Flair, Sting, Warriors, blah, blah, blah. And then you had this B show. And on this B show, you had fucking Oz, Diesel. You had Steve Austin. You had Regal. You had Texan Shanghai. You had, you know, you, you just had all this just doing these little bumfuck towns in nowhere. And, uh, I, and unfortunately, I would have to say uh, the last great territorial people might be Edge Christian and the Hardys. But I don't think they had it anywhere near as good as we had it, you know? Johnny, you would leave a place and you would be like, oh, I'm just, I've got several other places to call. I did Florida. I did South Atlantic. I did Memphis. I did WCCW. I did Japan. I did a lot in the Puerto Ricos. Uh, and I luckily, knock on wood, never got seriously hurt. So uh, 1988, 89, until 2003, I think, I called Vince. I said, hey, I'm going cooking full time. I said, you guys are coming. Can I have my last match in a ring? He was like, fuck yeah. Uh, and I got there and it was MVP's chop match, who was a very good friend of mine from Puerto Rico. And uh, and I haven't wrestled since then. And uh, I went into the kitchen. It just, uh, yeah, it worked out great, you know? And, and uh, I forgot where we were talking. I told you guys, you're going to have to remember where we were talking. <laughs> Oh, we're talking about the, 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 how the, the misconception that there was so much. Oh, heat. yeah. And there yeah. wasn't. I mean, I none mean, whatsoever. There wasn't heat back then. You know, you had some you had some problems. You know, Brett and Sean didn't get along, but that had nothing to do with clicks. Yes, didn't. no. And Ahmed and several people. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ahmed and D'Lo. Uh, it did. But I think that time period and those guys, I say those guys, us guys, uh, kept everybody in check when they needed to be in check, you know? Yeah, because and, uh, nothing else, the God ones were kind of the, the, the meter there of how good you were in check or not, because it depends on how much, what kind of slop bucket you got, depending on what Exactly. I'll tell you this. When we gave Sonny hers, we put it, I didn't put it. Chris Candido was and is one of my best friends ever. And it just broke my heart, him knowing, but it's his fault, because he knew what was going on. But, uh, when uh, we were going to do that, which was awesome, by the way, uh, <laughs> we uh, put the bucket in the locker room. We made it at, at catering. It was usually just lettuce, milk, and bread because it just made goopy stuff. You know, it was nothing, you know, and some veggies. It didn't, you could fucking eat it. Uh, and we put it in the locker room about two hours earlier than we should have. And <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we forgot about it and went about other things and did stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it was fine. It was a little full when we got back, but I'm sure it was fine, you know? 
<laughs> that was a fun one. And there might have been the comment that when y'all put it there, guys, listen, we're going to leave the bucket we're going to slop Sonny with, so please don't do anything to it. Oh, oh, yes, and the speech. <laughs> right. Guys, <laughs> this is the bucket that we are going to pour on that innocent little girl, Sonny. We're going to leave it here for a while. Don't anyone do anything for it. For it. We won't be around, but nobody do anything. And I like to think that as well, locker room leaders as we were, that no one did anything to the bucket. <laughs> you know, you, you guys had the craziest team. You were two huge guys, and you got the only manager that could be bigger than both of you when you got him believe yeah. <laughs> To this day. To this day. Dude, so, oh, you want to go hillbilly gym? Uh, I'll tell you this. When we started, I had been my entire life for some reason, uh, well, Dusty and I liked it, uh, Texas. And uh, then uh, I went up there and became a hillbilly. And they were like, forget, you know how to wrestle. And uh, I, I had hillbilly, so that wasn't a problem. I just say, tell me what you know. But uh, doing that character has nothing to do with wrestling. And then I'm like finding shit like the mule kicks or where I would have the spell and flip out. Uh, having Hillbilly Jim and for like three months they had us in eight man tags with the Bushwhackers who were like, mate, nobody gives a shit who wins this. The only <laughs> thing that matters is you get the kids in the ring and you dance with them after the match, whether you win or lose. And they won't care or remember. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Yeah. What you know, could be easier than this than running around or maybe running around in a fanny pack? You know, we had a six-man loop one time. We had me and Davey and Owen, who I think had the titles at the time because it comes up in a store. Oh, and it dude, was, some of those matches with Davey and Owen oh. drove me so crazy. When they didn't want to do shit, they weren't doing shit. Oh, but when they were great, they were great. Well, first of all, I'm on the apron with Owen, and Davey would call a spot. he go tackle, drop down, hip toss. Owen would turn to the crowd and, and tell them what And say his back, exactly. <laughs> I remember that. He said tackle drop down. <laughs> he's going to drop down and he's going to give him a hip hop. And he would do it. Go, I told you, I told you. Well, yeah. yeah. I saw him do it one night and he did it with hand gestures. He was like tackle and then he's going to run and hit the ropes and he's doing it to the people. And then when it happens, he's like, Told you. Uh, uh, one time, uh, with you guys, and he had done something to Henry and made him he made him mad. And Henry, you don't want to do that. Henry's gonna slam you on top of him, and Owen yeah. rolls, rolls. He rolled out of the way. He <laughs> left. Yeah, I remember that. Ah, <laughs> it's so funny. One time, yeah. we, had, we had Clarence Mason was the manager of Davey and Owen. So we're in a six man tag. It's it's us three, and it's you and uh, Bart Gunn. You guys are Bart Gunn. And Clarence is on the apron with the belts, holding them up like this. Owen says, hit the ropes by Clarence. Oh. Remember, it was in Vegas. I yeah, hit and he knocked him off. I hit the ropes like Gordy. I hit the ropes. Yeah. It launched yeah. Clarence Mason and the titles into the crowd. That's awesome. <laughs> he was that so is awesome. There's a, there's a thing like that. I don't know if we ever told you this. This was WCW. Uh, <laughs> It was one of those ridiculous, like, eight-man things. It was Texan Shanghai and Bobby Eaton and Eric Watts against uh, – oh, somebody sent me a match with Bobby uh, – with me and Bobby tagging. I was like, oh, that's cool. It was me and Bobby – me, Henry – or blah, we had too many names. Texan Shanghai, Bobby, and uh, Eric Watts against – Oh, no, not Eric Watts. Uh, Kevin Nash against Eric Watts, Van Hammer, Scorpio, and Bagwell. <laughs> and uh, Jacksonville, uh, nobody's there. It's WCW's B team, you know, so we're just having fun. It's trying not to get hurt. And uh, <laughs> we're walking around at the beginning of the thing, and everybody gets out, and Kevin's in there. And uh, he walks over to Van Hammer, the only other guy kind of his size. And uh, he walks up to him, and he says something. And uh, then he, he pushes Van Hammer, like just gives him a shove, and Hammer grabs the rope, and like, whoa. And the people are like, ooh. And Hammer looks both ways, and Kevin's standing there, and then he's going to push him, and Kevin takes a step back, and he goes to push him, and he ass over tea kettles into the ring, and he's sitting there, and he gets up. The whole place is laughing, and Kevin puts his hands up, like, what are you going to do? 
And he literally got out of the ring and stood back on the apron and didn't do anything. I'm like, fight him or something. Oh, Van Hammer. Oh, Van Hammer. Owen, one time, before I got there, they tell the story all the time. I know you've heard it. Where you had Lex Luger and Davey Boy tagging together. And Luger's doing the big muscle guy gimmick. You know, he had one of the greatest bodies of all time. He goes to press Owen. Owen hangs on to him like a spider monkey and won't let him press and so then yeah. Davy comes in and Davy presses him. It does <laughs> and yeah. again, Davy's the strongest man. Strongest man. Yeah. He he was uh oh dude, he would uh one of the things that would make me so mad. I mean, when they wanted to wrestle, oh my god, it was oh, they were awesome. when they wanted to. We were in a lot of uh, yeah, we were in a lot of places where there was no need to. <laughs> no. And he was gonna let you know about that. One of the things that would make me so crazy is I would lock up with Owen and he would go, All right, back you in. Uh, back the clothesline, hip toss, arm drag, reverse hip toss, blah, blah, blah. Call a whole spot. Uh, or actually would like slam me. I'll go to do it. Keep you up. That was what it is. And then a big giant spot. And uh, <laughs> I would go, oh, I would toss around with him and I pick him up and I slam him and he just lays there. He's like, oh, I can't move. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And he would just super slowly roll over to Davey. <laughs> one time, oh, fucking Owen. One time, Jack Lanza asked me, he goes, where's Owen? His music's played through already. So I went back, you know, with four cell phones, and Owen's on the payphone. And he's talking to the guy, and I'm standing like a foot from him, and I'm like, Owen, Jack, they're waiting on you. Owen goes, Owen tells the guy, he goes, listen, I'm sorry, I got to go. My music's already played through once. Uh, he goes, when? Really? And he just starts talking to me. Get Owen! I love Owen. Oh, man. That whole family. Oh, shit, guys. If it was a house show or WrestleMania, if Owen felt like having fun, he had fun. Yeah, he had fun. Yeah, he would make Henry so mad. Yeah, so yeah. Mad. Yeah. Like frustrated. Ugh. Billy Gunn would make him mad too. Them mm-hmm. sons of bitches. Those fucking overalls we had. They would like they would do a spot where they would back me in, and as they got me in, get ready like double shoot me off. Uh, Bart would reach over and Billy would be there, and they would pop the fucking straps on my overalls, and then shoot me off as they're falling down. So I'm like going in my overalls and my underwear, and then around my ankles. Ah. Oh. What do you think somebody would do? Uh, what do you think Vince would do if somebody did anything we we're just saying on a house show? <laughs> oh man! What? And Owen did it every night. Every, every night. Every, every night. You know, some of those international tours we do, like that one German day tour we'd have, we're on like 30 days or 27 yeah. days and 30 That's days. That's we made Caracas or whatever his name was quit. Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, the big that. muscle guy, whatever his name was? Oh, Alcum or what? Rockus. Uh, yeah, yeah, he quit Al- that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 But that he was had your fault, Johnny. It was brutal, <laughs> man. It was brutal. But I, that's when Orn would really shine when he would really want to do something. Oh, yeah. He, he'd go out there. Those, those, those German people over there just loved him to yeah. death like they yeah. did here. But uh, yeah. when when he wanted to go, man, there, there was nobody better. But he, you're right. When he wanted to have fun in the ring, I mean, it was so hilarious just to watch. Yeah. You're yeah. let alone be in the ring with him. I can't imagine what it was like trying to be, be in the ring with him when Owen was out there having fun. Oh, it was extremely fun and extremely, extremely frustrating. Oh. So you had two things to do. You could get mad or you could just have fun, yeah. depending on where it is. <laughs> but then you're going to get in trouble for, like, not doing your job. You know, Davey used to register in a room under a fake name just to stay away from Owen. <laughs> That's <laughs> smart. He knows. His family, he knows. Oh, oh speaking of that, do you know who I've been talking to who's trying? I'm trying to do, a uh, like, a YouTube uh, cooking show here. And like Drew McIntyre and some other people uh, have said they would come over and like, you know, just hang out with me and let me, you know, let them show. I've had Xavier Woods over here and cook. Did I tell you guys Molly Holly? I never mind. Uh, I love her, by the way. I know she's married. John, what can I do? Kill him? All right. Franchise is killed. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, I, I really want to do that and like talk to him and everything like that. And uh, 
Georgia Smith, uh, Davy Boy's daughter, and uh, Harry, who is a solid son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, he's a yeah, beast. He's a, yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah. And J- I talked to, that's what this Instagram stuff. I talked to Wes all the time on Instagram, too. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So, Dennis, yeah. What, how, what got you into cooking? Um, I, my family was always into cooking and everything, and I left WWE, and uh, the, this is where they, Vince, or uh, JR called me, and he was like, hey, I, dude, and I'd never been hurt, so I'm going 1989 to 2000 and like one or two, uh, you know, full-time territories, 20, you know, 200, 250 days a year, so I'm just fucking dead. And they said, we're not going to read your contract. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And he goes, well, Vince uh, really likes you. Uh, and he was wondering if he could pay you for another year without working. You know, just pay. You don't have to work for the company. I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so he did that. And uh, I was paid for, for uh, that time. And I went and I found the fanciest uh, restaurant in town. Now, when I say I'm a cook, I uh, I cook the shit you see on plates that are. Super now you're in Clearwater Beach. Beach. That would be the Waffle House, right? Uh, it's Denny's. Okay, Son of Denny's. Bitch. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know what the Waffle House did to me? Hey, I respect the Waffle House cooks though. They've got to make an omelet, a pork chop. Uh, you know, it, they're good and it's fast, especially with drunk people. But uh, yeah, I uh, had the time and I went and this guy was an instructor at the Le Cordon Bleu in Paris. And uh, I went, I said, can I talk to the chef? And she was like, no, but you can leave an application. This is a fancy French, Frenchy place. I said, well, if I leave an application, it's going to say, for, you know, 18, 19 years WWE. So it'd be easier if I could talk to the guy. She goes, oh, you're a wrestler? And don't think I don't use that whenever I have to, brother. I got a free oil change the other day because a guy went to me, hey, aren't you a wrestler? I was like, oh, yeah. He goes, Undertaker. I go, not no, but she goes, no, you were, I'm with the Undertaker. I was like, yeah. He gave me a free oil change, so <laughs> 20 some years out of business. But, uh, yeah, I went and I talked to him. He said, go home and get your shit. And then for the next, I literally this past, I think it was June, have been doing food longer than I was doing wrestling like 18 years in wrestling and like 18 years doing this just a little bit longer. And then I went here and there and I went and did sushi for two years, uh, back and forth in, uh, different countries. And, uh, I learned from everybody. Uh, I make food that looks like art. I'll send you guys some pictures. It's, uh, it's crazy. You know, I'm not making a big plate of mashed potatoes at a steak. I mean, my shit looks like it's awesome. I'm really good. <laughs> you're, you're Why right, hasn't dude. Undertaker hired me for his chef? God, come on, I'm his friend. What the fuck? He did sacrifice you one time, me and Ron Hill. He did. I yeah. know. And <laughs> I, one of my favorite stories that I tell everyone whenever they talk about that was, I was like, you know, also, uh, Bradshaw talked his minister into finally watching Monday Night Raw. And the very first night he watched was when his Christian friend held a guy down to get cut and drag somebody else's butt. So that probably went over very... Wasn't that true? That's true. A hundred percent true. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. We sacrificed a person to the demonic forces on Money Not Raw. I remember. <laughs> we Dennis, you're, and Vince. Dennis, you're one of the few people uh, beside my brother who, who said, I quit, and you quit. I mean, you didn't I do did. independent shows. You didn't come around. Nothing. I mean... He, he, you did come around so much that Vince got worried about you and called you one yeah. time. They Dennis, you know, Vince they, called they, me at work. I was on the, uh, I was at work, maybe like, well, this is even another one, like about six months ago. Oh no, it was before the pandemic. So whatever that was, uh, time doesn't matter. And it was Taker. And I was like, Hey, what's up? I'm at work. He goes, uh, somebody wanted to say hi to you. And he gave me the phone. This is like, what a year ago. And it was Vince. He said, I just want to say hi, blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome, man. Uh, yeah, and Taker says that. You know, I mean, I, uh, I I was fortunate enough to say, can I please, I my last wrestling match was in a sold-out Emily Arena against MVP. So I'm good with that. And I got something else I can do, you know. 
And I think that's the problem is people don't know when to let go. John, come on, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I didn't wrestle. Why don't you write another book with me? I tried reading one of your books, but there was too many numbers in it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't wrestled in years. It's been good grief. Yeah, yeah. 14 years. I wouldn't yeah. even know what to do now. You know, the funny part was on Tinker's uh, retirement day, yeah. whatever it was we went to, it was all the old crippled guys trying to get up the yeah, stairs. In the ring. <laughs> yeah. Henry goes, I'm going to slide in. You want to follow me like we used to? I go, no. I said, no. I will take you guys down. No. And then the next night of the party, fucking MVP was fucking around with me, uh, who I love. And uh, it's this is just the young people. You know, all you, all you old guys went to bed. So it was just Taker. And he was like, you have Dennis, you muted on us. You went away, Dennis. <laughs> Or the live TV. Uh, <laughs> this yeah, is live, live TV. TV. What uh, What was I just saying? Oh, you said. Oh, yeah, the, the second thing. night. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the second night, they moved us into a little room, and it was uh, everybody who had heard about the first night. Uh, I saw Drew McIntyre that, that day. He said the first thing he did was call the office and say, you have to get me a room there tonight. So we did a second night of it, and we were there, and I got to hang out with uh, – with Drew, who I still talk to, great guy. Uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler, always been one of my favorite wrestlers. Don't know him as a person, but he was super cool, and he's very funny. And fucking MVP got all toasted and uh, leg dies me and breaks two of my fucking ribs. He leg died me <laughs> that night. Too bad. Yeah, I didn't know what we were doing. He held me up, and uh, I was like, oh, you fucking suck. Why did you do that? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, Whatever, I'm going to bed. I went to bed and I got up and it was like, ah, oh, you know how like when you break your, I like that you're the only two people that I can say this. You know how when you break your rib and you don't really yeah. know it and then you yeah. wake up and you're like, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, tell I was story, like, never, I'll tell you a story, never been told. Ron got, it was uh, working with Albert and Albert and Tess had done something and Ron was a little bit mad, but not really mad, but he decides to put a boot into, I think Albert or Tess, I can't remember. And they saw Ron coming, and they realized Ron had a little steam in his eyes, and they moved. Ron yeah. kicked me and broke two of my ribs. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's the uh -huh. worst. There's nothing you can do. Oh, it's so painful. Uh -huh. I In wrestling school, like a month into wrestling school, this big fat kid I was laying down gave me a splash up the second, and, like, I could feel, like, that cartoon, like, like my body going, wah, wah. And, uh, I woke up the next morning and I couldn't move. I was like, uh, uh, and I crawled to fucking wrestling school and I was like, uh, and Steve was like, oh yeah, you got the wind knocked out of you. I'm like, okay, you're the boss. You're the guy I'm paying cash to. He was taking like gold jewelry and shit from people. And, uh, then like two days after working with that, uh, I woke up and I could not get out of bed and I had two broken ribs. Yeah. Yeah. MVP legged out me onto a fucking table underneath the table, the legs, and it broke my fucking ribs. <laughs> hey, uh, Midian. Hey, Dennis, you were, you were a good friend with a good, real good friend of all of ours on this, on this panel here. And, uh, Paul Bear, Percy. Uh, yeah, I, uh, know, I know, I know Percy was down here in Florida in the early days. Did, did you meet Percy when he was Percy down here in Florida or did it was it Paul Bear that, that you knew? Well, Paul Bear, uh, I, I grew up watching him doing Creature Feature. I believe it was on Channel 44. <laughs> ah, channel you're four. the only one that would get 44. <laughs> you're the only one that would get that. Uh, Sa so, Saturday afternoon uh, Creature Saturday Feature. Saturday Creature Feature. I'll be working for you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Johnny. Florida, Florida joke. Uh, yes, uh, no, I had seen tapes of uh, Percy in uh, World Class. And then my first trip in like 90 to Mid South, uh, he was there for a couple days. Uh, liked him, you know, uh, didn't know anything about him. Um, and then when we got up there and, you know, he was in BSK, he was BSK too. And, uh, he just, you know, we had the same, you know, redneck. We watched the same wrestling, you know, both Briscoe brother fans. And, uh, and uh, he was just the best. I had so much. I traveled with him. One of my greatest things, and Johnny, uh, you can kind of agree with this and not, 
Um, uh, I think the coolest thing is standing in the ring, especially at like a big pay-per-view as you, JBL, and then getting to watch the Undertaker entrance. Yeah. It's, an, it's amazing, right? Oh, and now God. you've been in a couple of his entrances, but our shitty uh, Ministry of Death, or yeah, whenever Vince took over. Oh, they ruined that on us so bad, dude. Uh, anyway, and uh, it wasn't really the same, but uh, I main evented uh, Madison Square Garden. It was me and Taker versus uh, Ken Sherrock and Cactus Jack, and it was the last day of the tour before everybody was going home. And uh, or something, and uh, so they didn't want to do shit. So uh, it was Taker, me, and them, and they went out. And then I got the full Undertaker tape with Paul uh, entrance with Paul Bear, and I got to stand right next to Paul Bear. So it was a you know it was just us, and I got to kind of you know osmosisly become the Undertaker, and it was so fucking cool. You know, I uh, uh, with Percy, I was like, do I wait? He's like enjoy it brother he goes i'm gonna follow you and uh you know being in the bsk we traveled with him and did a lot of stuff with him a lot of his jack daniels and coca-cola belly washers uh he's uh he's awesome and i got very sad because i heard his kids were trying to sell his fucking hall of fame ring on pawn stars wow. that I terrible? Didn't hear that. wow that's that, terrible that was the great yeah. entrance i believe that was the greatest entrance in wrestling history I don't know anything that was even close. Especially All right. Give me a second. Uh, 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 would be close? Okay. A, 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 a case could be made for Golden Era Hogan, uh, but only because of the person and the music or Warrior. But no one had that. I mean, it was like if Kevin Sullivan and the Dungeon of Doom had a billion dollars to make a movie entrance. That's kind of what it would be like, but uh, oh, uh, Austin's is good, but no, nobody has the lights or the effects. My favorite, you remember the one where he walked and all the hands, it was a silhouette, and all the hands were like reaching out of the ground? Yeah. That, was, that was a good one. I, I, think take, I think Taker could be on WrestleMania each year and not even have to work, just do an entrance, and I think uh, that people would be happy with it. They would, but I'll tell you this, I don't know, I mean, I, I, I know the man, but I don't know his, his mind. Uh, I think, like you were saying, with me being out of it, it, uh, it has to be. And yes, honestly, he said it. The entrance is 90% of the match. He says it's all downhill from there. But uh, I think uh, it, it's the, uh, the respect thing more than him. He would rather be fucking homeless then uh, go back on something he doesn't think, you know, like Flair going back, but, but he's not Flair. Uh, I think he'll do some stuff occasionally. I think what will be good for him, not entire entrances, but like his music and the entrance and then the, the him coming out, but just the silhouette, you know, of him not actually going out, just the silhouette to emphasize some kind of point. Like uh, when I start managing Liv Morgan and Alexa <laughs> Bliss is trying to throw the voodoo on us, I say we got this in our pocket, and then he comes. Dude, that's what he, he could he could he could even do a hologram of, of him walking out. You know, oh, people, that, people would pop. <laughs> that would suck, but the hologram of Paul Bear was the coolest thing. It was yeah. so classic. What that that was awesome, man. I've that got was the nice. uh, Washington Generals record against the Undertaker. You know, the yeah, dude. The yeah. And <laughs> yeah, but you know what? They had a game every fucking night, didn't they? <laughs> Because I worked with him every single night. There for, you go. Like, you did. Straight. You really came uh, after we all uh, left you. You uh, you did awesome, man. You did really good. Uh, well, you know, and it was yeah. it was such an honor to work. I I I can't tell you how much respect I had for the Undertaker. All those guys I got. Oh. With, you know, it just every night was different. Every night was literally I'd walk in there and what do you want to do? Yeah, you I'll can't have the same thing. He hates stale. Yeah, he said I'll see you, you out can't. there. And every night yeah. would be somehow different. You know, we'd... Well, can I tell you this as a, a personal friend, like I say, he's a dick. Nobody really likes him. Wife hates him. Hey, do you know Molly Holly's husband? Can you kill him for me? <laughs> no. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I, he, I'm going to do he's, it in the he's watching. He, you see that little square right next to you that's dark? That's yes. the taker. That's the taker. He's, he's always watching. He is. Yeah, he's always he is. watching. 
Hey, good. I got nervous. Yeah. But I was going to say, thank you so much for com coming to the show. Oh, guys. Love to have you on again sometime. You, you're the best. We've been friends for 30 something years. And I Isn't that love crazy? I loved you the first day I met you. I still do. Uh, that means we're almost 30 something. That's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. We're well, I love you. And I'm going to tell you guys this I have never done a podcast. This is my first one. Great. And I do well, it for you. People ask me, and I like kind of like, oh, I'm working. I got to do that. Da, da, da. But when you when your name when when you when your name come up, John and I was oh. talking, you know, and uh, how about Dennis there and, and John about a, about a minute? Does he do them? Uh, I've <laughs> no. never seen him. I've like never seen him. I've never I seen him. That. So that's the reason. That's the reason yeah. we have to do him because he don't do them. You know? <laughs> I just got. Uh, oh well, how about Brian Blair? What's going on with him and his kid? Oh my God! But right before yeah. all that, they just. Uh, uh, inducted me i think it's uh, october 28th into the florida wrestling hall of fame you should awesome. be there shouldn't you yeah awesome. are you in the texas one johnny are you in the texas wrestling hall of fame i don't think so no do they have one they do have one. <laughs> that's a very small class <laughs> it's, uh, what, it's the von erics it's just the von Eric. it's just yeah. it's just carrie uh, kevin and david and fritz oh and eric they had to, eric <laughs> Embry had to go in there too that's right eric uh, Embry had, yeah had, uh, first pringle <laughs> but anyway Thank guys you so much. appreciate it this is as good as I, we thought it would be I love you guys. Wherever Dennis, you thank you so much, man. Let's get together real soon. We went down, we went over that place. But tell us, tell yeah, us, we'll uh, do something tell else. us if, if any if any of these people are coming down to Clearwater Beach and they want a gourmet meal, how yes. can they find a gourmet meal by Dennis Knight? All right. You can come to my house because the club that I work at costs thirty five thousand dollars to apply. You lose your money if you don't get accepted. You lose that. And then it costs $4,000 a month, and you have to spend $500 a month before you can even eat anything. So, hey, my partner, my partner <laughs> said next to me there, he can handle he it. Yeah. There. He can Let handle me tell it. You he, this. Got, he got it covered. So, we're the Hulk order. Hogan lives three doors down from my club. I've been and trying to get him in for two years. Yeah, well, yeah, he don't, he, um, he, he, don't, have a, he don't have the connection. Yeah. To my partner.